got two systems. We run a GPS-based system and also a heart rate system. GPS is a huge, a huge thing, probably the biggest tool that, that all these groups use now. But we've got overhead views so we can see certain aspects and patterns that we, we want to run in training, what works, what doesn't work. You know, they're there to monitor what the players do on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis, block-to-block -block basis. Uh, and like I said, it's all individualised, so out there today, We've got averages on what the players are used to doing and post-session we'll get feedback on whether they were above or below. It just allows us to tailor their weeks to be as similar as possible. You know, we found that if players are jumping up and around doing things they're not used to, that's when issues kind of occur. 10, 15 years ago when training wasn't recorded and you didn't have a live feedback of your tackle, if someone's telling you and you're not quite picking it up, it might be slightly harder. So I guess just the, it's, it's easier to learn quicker because you can sort of do and review there on the spot or if not on the spot that evening. S&C departments have grown, the sports science departments have grown, they've got GPS, they've got live GPS. There's a lot more at the disposal of the player. I think even with the data that we've got, I think your instincts are, are, are still important and I think Certainly at this club we try to, to use the data, whether it's in the, the performance team or the rugby side of things, to um, back up your gut instincts or to tell you your gut instincts are probably wrong. Um, and I think it's important to have both. I think it's a big factor and I think they're really useful tools. I think you've got to be careful um, not to get too carried away with them. It's almost the case that analysis has become so important that you know what the player you're playing against is going to do before they do. Their body language gives away whether they're going to step off their left foot, their right foot. But sometimes, again, it's too easy to get really focused on, on what's happening. You can look at figures, you can look at stats of people, how long, the, uh, how quick they run, how many tackles they've made. But actually a lot of it is down to the coaches and actually having their own thoughts about what they think about players. And uh, I think that will hopefully never go away. The benefit of how the technology has come on is again about player welfare. If I'd played and the guy that hadn't even got on the pitch would go and do exactly the same training session. And you know, so my workload, if I played, was ridiculous during the week because you know, I might have made 15 tackles in the game or quite big collisions and I was being treated the same as someone who hadn't got onto the field. I think now you know, pretty much everyone across the Premiership wears GPS units for games, wears it in training as well as heart rate monitoring. Um, so the technology now used to try and one, quantify what those players are doing and then to drive their performance has increased over the last three or four years and it's also now the data that we have on those players gives us a better ability to be pinpoint accurate in how we approach their loading, how we approach their strength because once you understand the demands that those players are under you can then more specifically condition them to be able to cope with those demands and flourish within those demands. And the players love the feedback, they love the competition and you get accountability from it too so that just helps drive on performance to, to a greater level than just giving subjective feedback on what something looked like. Actually having the numbers probably where technology had the biggest effect, I'd say.